Women Up Radio, designed to facilitate women's empowerment, improve your career, develop your talents, incorporate your passions, achieve fulfillment and success. Hello, this is Women Up Radio, supporting Empower Women. Today we're talking about what CEOs expect in their senior managers and the unexpected benefits to women's careers in the transport industry. I'm joined in the studio by my guest, Emmerich Bastide, who's Managing Director of GLS France. It's one of the subsidiaries of Royal Mail. He's an experienced international director for Europe and Africa. He's got previous business experience in Latin America. Emmerich is a specialist in new product and national brand communication and supply chain, as well as being a strong supporter of equal opportunities for women. So, welcome to the program, Emmerich. Good morning, Anna. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you. Emmerich, can I start by asking you to tell me a little bit about your work at GLS and also the different challenges that are present for a CEO and a managing director in logistics compared to your previous field, which was in the food industry? I work for the GLS company. GLS is a subsidiary of Royal Mail Group, the UK Post, and our business is to transport parcels until 30 kilo by road uh, through uh, the Europe in each country. Mm -hmm. The target of the business is to have a very good quality and to respect the commitment we have taken with our customer to respect the, the time to the delivery mm -hmm. and the service around the delivery. Especially because we develop strongly the B2C segment, it means the challenge is to be able to coordinate the delivery with the consignee, the private consignee, yeah. and it's more and more challenging, especially for consignees who are working during the day. The challenge of our business is to understand the challenge of the behavior of the consignee when they buy by internet and after that to coordinate by the new technologies, the digitalization of our technology, to communicate with the consignee to find the right time yeah. um, uh, to, to, to organize the delivery uh, direct to the end. Yeah. And so comparing that to the targets you had in the food industry, are there similarities or is it very different? There is some similarity around the flow because when I worked in the food industry, I worked for fresh food, yeah. especially for green salad in bag or convenience food with a short time life of the product. Yeah. And when you have to coordinate a fresh food flow between the agriculture and consumers, the flow is a strategic component of the business. And yeah. for the parcels business, is the same uh, target. Yeah, yeah. Okay. To reduce the flow and to optimize the flow. Yes, okay. And so you've undoubtedly achieved success in both sectors. So for you... How easy or difficult was it for you to adapt and to make the change from one field to the other? In this industry, the starting point is to have a volume forecast, to adapt the resources, especially for the transport, the resources in the hub, in the depot or in the facilities, to adjust the variable cost to the volume we have to process. Yeah. It's the key component of this business for food industry, fresh product, or for parcels business. In both cases, we have to industrialize the organization yes. because the pressure on the price in these markets are so strong, you fight every day, cent by cent, to build your margin. Okay, so it's, it's really very market-oriented and financial. There's a lot of pressure. So Yes. With that, I know you've got a lot of experience as a CEO working with many other countries. So when you're looking for a team, 
what are the main qualities and strengths that you look for in your immediate team to ensure the best running of the company and therefore to be able to adapt to the challenges of the the flow and the feel and the market? Yes, it's a key question, uh, especially <laughs> because in our environment, there is a lot of change. First of all, I would say we search the professionalism and the competency. Yeah. It's, it's the basic, mm -hmm. uh, according to the job description. After that, the other component is the loyalty, honesty, transparency. Yeah. Because it's the basis of the communication. And when you have a team around you, if you have a good communication, if you are able to speak clearly about the situation, the problems, the strategy, and you have a clear view, if you have a, a clear description of the problem, you have a part of the solution. Yeah. And for that, you need loyalty, honesty, transparency. Yeah. It's a basics of the communication in the teamwork. The third group of capability is humility, able to listen to the others, yeah. accept the difference, and accept to have some people around you better than you in your domain of expertise. Yes. Because as there is a lot of new technology, new behavior, new approach in the market, new of a difference between countries, you have to be able to listen the others to understand this difference, to understand especially the difference in the culture of people. If you work on the German market or on the French market, you have to understand differently how the, you have to manage the people. You don't manage the people with the same approach if you compare the German market, the Italian market, or the French market. The social relations with the unions are not the same, yeah. and the behavior of people are not the same. Is it difficult for your team to adapt to that when they they have to change their mindset, their mentality about the culture? Or do you find people change quite easily? No, it's at each time, it's a challenge. Mm. To understand if uh, the, the, the person you want to recruit, if this person has an experience of that, yeah. or if he has to learn. Yeah. And for that, you have to travel in the country. You have to participate in the meetings of these people in the country. Yeah. If you compare Germany and Italy about the management, the, 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 the communication are not the same. In Germany, if you say, we have to do that, people respect the, the information and they do that. Yeah. In Italy, they will speak a lot, they will write less things, but at the end, they will do it as in Germany. Yes. In France, they will begin to discuss if it's a good idea. <laughs> and they will try to find another idea. <laughs> and we will speak and we'll speak and we'll speak. And we have to convince people. It's more difficult to give a clear message. Now the target is that. In two weeks, we will reach it. Yeah. And you have to adapt your behavior, your style, especially if you have to manage a meeting, especially if you have changed organization. Yeah. If you, you, you take a German manager in France to turn around a company, it could be a problem. Yes. <laughs> and it's the reason in that case you have to understand the strategy of the company to be able to transform the approach of the strategy in the local country yeah. with the necessity to take into consideration uh, the culture of the people. Yeah, yeah. I was laughing because I've worked in several countries and I've seen the complete incomprehension between people from different nationalities because it's not they don't understand the language or that they don't understand the, the targets. It's the concept of how to react. It's so different depending on your culture. And what would be, for me as a, a Brit, for me what would be automatic and I wouldn't even think about it 
it's completely different in the States or in Spain or in Italy, as you say, or here in France. Yes. It's the, the whole way of thinking is different. And I think you need to be very skilled to be able to become almost a chameleon so that you can fit into the different culture um, and understand what the other people are, are thinking. Yes, it's true. It's very important. Yeah. I can see when we have at the European level our strategy meeting. Generally, there is no problem to understand the target of the strategy, to understand the perspective uh, where we will arrive in a few years according to the strategic plan. Yeah. The problem it is, is the execution. Yeah. After the strategy, and generally there is no issue behind the strategy, there is a problem of execution. Yes. The main competence for the country manager is to understand clearly the strategy and to adapt the strategy to the local country yeah. according the market, the trend we can find in this country. Yes. It's the key component, how to execute the strategy. Yeah. For that, around you, when you are a country manager, another competency is the courage. Is the courage and to be able to take some risks. To explain to your board why you have taken this risk according to the strategy, to execute properly the strategy, especially when you have to change some process, part of the organization, especially if you have to centralize or decentralize the responsibility. Yeah. It's a key component of our organization because we, have a, we are a network. Yeah. And we have a lot of hubs and depots in Europe. Yes. In each depot, we have a manager. And the challenge in our company is to convince all managers, according to the behavior of local country, to respect the strategy and to execute properly at the end, the commitment we have taken with our customer, yeah. because the final target is to be client centric. Yes. From that, how do you achieve the balance of success from the shareholders' point of view? So, material results, basically, and match it with positivity and motivation and enthusiasm from the personnel. So, creating the optimum working environment, because that must be very difficult. Yes. In our company, we have a double culture. First of all, the shareholder is the Royal Mail Group. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have launched an IPO in 2013. And it has been a big change in the company. Yeah. Because we have to communicate regularly every quarter to the investors. Mm -hmm. What we will do, how will be the growth, and uh, how much results we will produce because we are really cash oriented. Yeah. Between this communication to the financial community and the simple workers you have in the depot, it's the great target to decline the communication until the elementary task in the depot to execute properly the job with the right level of resources. Yeah. For that, we have a, a strong system of reporting to, to explain the target and to motivate the people to take some commitment about their target. Yeah. We never force any manager to take a target, but we force the people, the managers, to explain how they build their target to be sure it is realistic. Yes. And to be sure, at the end, the commitment we will take with the board is reachable. Okay. Okay. Cool. But another competency around the country manager is the team spirit. The good manners is a part of the team spirit. Yeah. Because if you have a lot of people with professionalism, your loyalty, transparency, courage, able to listen, to take risks, at the end, you need to coordinate that with the team spirit. And for that, the quality of the life in the company is very important. Yes. Because we have to work strongly every day. But we need also times to have some good times with the, with the colleagues, yeah. to share some the good results, to, to share good events, yeah. and to have a special moment between us 
more than only work. Yeah, exactly. A bit of fun and a bit it's, of natural. Yes, and it's it's necessary because we have a strong pressure. Yeah. And we can see regularly some people that they lose their personal balance because they have not enough resistance to the stress. Yes. We have a strong stress every day. Mm. We have the daily business, we have the pressure of our customer, we have the pressure of the market, we have the pressure of the shareholders, we have the pressure of the unions. Yeah. We are in the center of a, a, a pressure system. Yes. And uh, you need to keep your balance. You need to be able to resist to the stress on the long term. Yeah. And the quality of the life in the company is a part to help people to resist to the stress. Yeah, very good. Okay. So there are many statistics available today which prove that having women in middle and senior management improves the results for the company. So what do you think women bring to the table that really contributes to this increased success? First of all, I have to explain that in our business, especially in the transport, originally it's a world of strong men. Yeah. But we can see that some women, some women are able to manage depot or hub. Yeah. And progressively, we have found some women able to manage depot with best results than the average we have in the network. Oh, really? We have not a lot. Uh, now in Europe, we have 13% of women as manager of depot or hub. Yeah. And if we look at their results, we can see generally they are better than the men. Yes. I would say, first of all, they are more natural in their communication, especially when they are to speak to explain some things to the basic workers, to the loaders, to the drivers. They have good manners to have a natural respect with the others. Mm -hmm. And generally, they have better human re relations with the others. Yeah. Sometimes the men try to force their communication with their, with their position because they are only the, the manager. Yes. Um, they have not the, the good manner to explain the things. After that, we can see that it's easier to find women in the expert job than managers. Yeah. But when we have managers, we have very good managers. For the first time, we have recruited for six months two women as regional manager, one in Germany and one in France. Oh, really? Yes, it's, it's new. Yeah. And uh, we are very happy because in the meeting, in the board of the country, at the country level, yeah. they are able to give another view about the job, yes. another view to communicate the target, yeah. another view to organize some challenges yeah. uh, in their region to motivate the people to coordinate the team spirit inside their team. Yeah. And uh, it's really useful. Yes. Of course, in the board or in the head office of each country, we have more women as experts for the communication, for the management report, for the yeah. finance, for the finance audits. Yeah. Uh, it's easier. Yes. But yeah. we can't say in our company the target is in two or three years we will have 50% uh, of women yeah. because it's not easy. Yeah. When we search a, a manager, when we analyze the curriculum vitae, the statistic now is really clear. We have 92% of our curriculum vitae as men. Yeah. Only 8% is women. Oh, really? Uh, perhaps also because uh, the transport is not a uh, really sexy business for, uh, for women. Yeah. When we transport parcels, it's not only a transport business, it's a service business. Yes. It's where we are. So but with, more and more, we have women in our organization. Yeah. And so do you think, because the, now that there's uh, a lot of pressure on companies to have more gender balance, and you've got governments that are trying to install quotas and others that are doing targets, 
So does that put pressure on you as a CEO that you've got to, you know, that you're forced to try and bring more women? Does it make a, an impact on your options or not? We have regular communication to promote women in our organization. Mm -hmm. And we have launched one year ago uh, a system of people review. Yes. To try to find potential women in our organization with the capability, the potential to be promoted as depot manager, hub manager or more. Yeah. But on the other hand, we have not received from the holding board a clear message about quota or target in our organization. Yeah. Also be because a part of our culture is the decentralization. We consider the decentralization as an advantage, a competitive advantage against some of the other competitors we have, which are more centralized. Mm -hmm. And when we have a strong culture decentralized, you have to accept the choice of your managers and you have to avoid to put a quota or a target to force people to recruit women. Yes. It's a part of, an, of the explanation. But more and more, we can see that women are really successful in their position in the company. Yes. And it's a kind of motivation to the managers to accept more women in their team. Yes. So what do you think? is the best way of implementing gender equality in a company and in the workforce? What do you think produces the best results? It's not easy to, to give you a clear answer. <laughs> uh, I would say, first of all, the behavior of the top manager, as an example, is the beginning. Mm -hmm. If I consider, as a country manager, for my country, women are able to help us in our business, of course, by this example, it will be a motivation for the others. Yes. When we decided, when I decided to recruit a woman as a regional manager, some of my colleagues request me, are you sure a woman can do this job? Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> and I said, of course, yeah. I am sure. Yeah. And you will see, she will be successful. <laughs> and uh, after six months, we can see that this woman knows more things than all the regional managers really? who are working for the company uh, more than 10 years. Yeah. Because in six months, she involved uh, a lot of time to understand the process, the organization, the, the figures, the, uh, the detail of the P&L, the mechanics of uh, how we build the price and so on. Yeah. And the rest of the team is now impressed by this woman. Yes. And she gained great respect from the others. Yeah, that's good. And I would say it's a, a part of the answer is uh, if you give the example that yeah. woman is able to do this kind of job as a strong manager, yes. you incitate the others to think, oh, okay, a woman can do it. Yes. After that, we have some statistics and every quarter we have some meetings to explain where we are in the, the structure of the people in the company how many women at which position, and so on. Yes. But it's not easy in our business to force people to recruit women. Yeah. Especially because at the beginning, when you search people, you have 92% of men. Yes. And only 8% as women. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It makes it so much more difficult. You are listening to Anna Letitia Cook at Women Up Radio. A lot is spoken about women's strengths and business skills being different to men's. Do you think this is true? I would say yes, because in my experience, all women I met as manager, I discovered in their professional life, it was harder generally than for the other men. Yeah. And of course, they spent more energy to reach the same level. Yeah. And generally... At the end, they have more experience yeah. and they have more methods, they have more rules, efficiency, and their knowledge is more sharp according to the business. Okay. On the other hand, with their experience, women are more intelligent to communicate, to reach the target, to convince people because they know very well their topics mm -hmm. with a lot of 
argues, and they have the know-how to communicate, to create the difference, sometimes by emotion or with a good argument. Yeah. And so for you, where would you think women's main skills are in business? From, from your experience working with women and promoting women, where have you found their strongest? Marketing and uh, human research. Yeah. Especially human research. For me, it's difficult to imagine that I will work with uh, human research as a man. Oh, really? Yes, because uh, I have had very, very good experience with women. Yeah. Perhaps yeah. because I found in the, with this woman a complementary approach according yes. to mine. Yeah. In marketing also, I have been impressed by women how they were able to understand the market, the segment, the behavior of the consumers. Yes. For me, they are more intelligent to understand the behavior of consumers yeah. <clears throat> with emotional uh, approach of the consumer, according to the color of the packaging, according to the price, perhaps because they have this kind of experience of the life that yeah. personally I am not. Yeah. So women who want to move into more technical or operational sectors, do you think there's a way that they can present themselves to, to have more opportunities for that? Perhaps. They have a kind of sensibility that we have not, uh, that yeah. the men have not. Yeah. On the other hand, I met some women as experts, Yes. and they are a very good experts, really rational, with a lot of methods, techniques, neutral in the conclusion, yeah. without emotion. Yeah. I found also that, but generally I found more women with an emotional, which are really uh, a strength for human research or marketing. Yes. I know with you saying you've promoted people to a regional manager and hub manager, which are definitely more the operational side. And you've said how the, they've had good results and <coughs> they work with a good relationship, which changes the, the mentality of everybody around them it makes a more positive environment to work in so if a corporation wants to offer more opportunities in other sectors so not just the the marketing or the human resources what type of professional development programs would you recommend to put into place i would say first of all why we have some women as depot manager or a manager. Mm -hmm. First of all, it is because of the motivation of this woman. Yeah. To obtain a status as manager with the freedom to decide a lot of things every day. Mm -hmm. After that, the program to promote women on this position is not so complex.